everybody. Welcome to Echo Underground. I'm Shanique. This is Mike. And on this podcast, we talk about music, movies, TV shows, and any other interesting topic. Today's episode is going to be another documentary, you know, in the honor of Black History Month called Not Black Enough. And I'm going to read the synopsis real quick. So basically, Not Black Enough is a film about class warfare and the cross ties that African Americans are dealing with within the black community community sorry the film takes a sometimes humorous always personal brutally honest and insightful look into the seldom explored phenomenon that is preserving the black culture the ultracizing of don't mock me (laughs) he always corrected me I said it right he just don't like the way I said anyway oh blacks for not being black enough not black enough a featured length documentary We'll explore the reasons behind this practice of fear and loathing internal to the black community. That's a lot of black community. So, yeah, that's what we're going to do for this podcast. Um, Before we get into the topics of the documentary, please tweet at us at Echo You Podcast. We want to know what you think about this or any other of our other podcasts, you know. And we do read the comments, so don't worry about it. And also, you can find us at almost any other social media sites. And um, apps as well at Echo Underground Podcast. And we'll get right into it. So, I'm going to give my grade. And my grade for this podcast, not this podcast, this documentary is a solid B+. Now, I, there's a lot of things I like. I mean, there's a couple things I didn't. Like, one was, like, the cheesy song. I didn't care for that song. Um, I also, I... I also didn't like the lack of dark skin representation in this. Like, you didn't really hear from, like, dark skin black people. Except for, like, that one guy. And I wish it was, like, a mix. More even. Because it's more, like, how light skin people feel. Instead of, like, how dark skin also view, you know, colorism in the black community. And I wish that was in there as well. But. Well, all right, go ahead. This is just, just my review. No, I understand. Um, I understand. That's the only thing I particularly didn't like, and I think that held it back. But it's still a B plus because I liked all the points I brought up. I like the reason, the different points of view. You had black men, you had women, you had professionals, you had ordinary people, you even had children in here giving their opinion about it. So I did like that aspect, and you had celebrities as well. So, what do you think of it? What's your grade? Um, it's like I said for the last documentary re- reviewed. I grade my documentaries more on like an educational scale more than like on an entertainment scale. So because I actually learned some shit, I'm going to give it an A plus. So okay. <laughs> this is going to happen. But yeah, um, piggybacking off Shani because, you know, I tend to do that with almost everything these days. Um, <laughs> yeah, um, I'm giving this is an A plus because one, it definitely included a wide spectrum of people to talk about um, the issue here. And um I liked it mostly because, like, I've always, like, heard about these things. It's kind of interesting to see in a topic format of, like, a documentary. So, uh, that was pretty cool. And, um, I know me and Shanique have, like, our own different, like, you know, ways of experiencing this kind of stuff going on. But it's, like, seeing everyone else on TV, especially coming from Harlem, which, me, you know, Shanique and I were both in New York. It's, like, you know, we're not, we're in Harlem. But, you know, we, we kind of see these things, you know, kind of face for, you know, in person pretty much. So, yeah, um, it, was, it was pretty interesting. I like um, whole, how, like, you know, it went from the top of the spectrum from, like, you know, the celebrities and, you know, the Miss Americas and all and peoples down to the kids who, granted, you know, not the most articulate, but, like, I like where they were coming from. Like, you know, these are smart kids. Like, they knew, they, they, they knew that their perspective also mattered. And, like, you know, the dose around them made it, um, made it known that, you know, their perspective mattered. And I like that. So, yeah, there goes my my quick review but we can get into like specific topics in a second here yeah so basically i guess i wanted to start this with basically this theme is what is black enough does that actually exist now for me personally i'm gonna have to piggyback on one of the guys in the documentary where he was like if you black that's it like (laughs) there's no such thing as black enough now some people like anti one drop rule or if you're biracial, you should say that. But let's be realistic. If someone saw you on the street, they just gonna call you black. Huh? If you look black, you know, so they they're just gonna assume you're black. But for me, I don't think there's a such thing as black enough. I know that other people will look 
because I, I'm light skinned, so I know that other people will think, because I've heard it recently, it's called uh, light skin privilege, even though, you know, oh, that's kind of like house nigga mentality, and I, I don't, like, go by that. They're like, oh, because you're light skinned, you'll probably get the job over someone who's equally as qualified and dark skinned. And that's what the whole light skin privilege thing is. I don't, there's some people are like that, but for me, there's no such thing as black enough. From my point of view. Even at, even though I know that some white people or people outside our culture think there's a, and inside our culture, let's not negate that, think there's a such thing as black enough. Do you that's, that's, think? That's one, that's one of the things too about the documentary. You're definitely focusing on like the, the, the internal perspectives on it. Like, you know, black people saying other black people aren't black, which is kind of strange. <laughs> yeah because you know we have we have the a lot of people in the black community have the mentality like oh because you could maybe pass as white mm-hmm. or another race then you're not black enough mm-hmm. you mm-hmm. gotta be 100 percent black or you're not black right like um real life example when prince Hen- henry or harry mm-hmm. he married a biracial woman so a lot of people like first black princess right even though i don't think that's actually true either but um, while other people in the community are like, oh, she's biracial, she's not black, and yada, yada, yada. It's different like that. And then there's also a couple actresses who look white, but then you see their parents and you're like, Hold whoa, up. right? But obviously they couldn't, let's, realistically, they probably couldn't call themselves black men or black women because they look like Logic. His dad is black, mm-hmm. but he couldn't call himself a black man. To a lot of people, because he looks like I mean, a white I mean, man. I mean, he does it in a lot of his songs, though. So I know, but like, let's be realistic here. I don't think he's considered a white rapper. Even he's the opposite of J Cole, because J Cole is biracial, just like Logic. But J Cole looks African American. Brown in him, right? Yeah, yeah. Logic is very pale, but <laughs> he's not considered a black rapper. He's considered a white rapper. Even technically, that's inaccurate because he's mixed and he is half black as well. Mm. It's just the way it is. Uh, another one that I thought was a really good point was how they talked about all the issues in the black community, including colorism. Foundation is slavery. We pass down a lot of the mentality from slavery into our children, into generations. That's where colorism started. That's where a lot of like what defines nice hair. That's where it's you know, where we got our faith from. What do you think about the whole slavery thing as being the foundation I mean, for our it's, problems? It's it's one of those things that everyone comes back to when they want to talk about, like, you know, institutionalized racism and all that kind of stuff. And it's like, yeah, because, you know, there's one person in the documentary who was like, you know, the shit worked. Because it's not, a lot of people also see it as, like, you know, it's not so much about, like, you know, white people also, you know, being the problem that we had back in slavery that we have right now, right now we're our own problem because like, you know, the internal struggle that we have inside of like, you know, the hood or whatever black communities we have. So I'm like, you know what? Um, I, I definitely seen, I, I've always thought that even before seeing the documentary, but like, you know, seeing, you know, everyone else also like, you know, give their fair share of like, you know, of their opinions. It kind of like, you know, maybe, 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 maybe notice here like, you know, okay. Yeah. This is a, this is definitely a thing here, you know, it's not just like it's um, being noticed by like a certain generation, nothing like that. Like it goes way back to those from like you know the freaking forties all the way up to now. And it's it's, it's in different it's in different bomb um, parts. Like it, it, you can talk about this in a uh, hundred different ways, from like the school system to like how they're more incarcerations than um any other you know group in America to how they get hired or get real estate or get ju- you know it's, it's a, a whole but it's all long laundry list of shit you can talk about when it comes to like you know the roots that it created and now 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 it like kind of grew into what it is now for real so i don't know it's, it's, it's just it's just weird to me because it's like I, I i they're they're right but like they, they also kind of like it's handed down the torch like like the well the, the the bad ones back in the day at least they handed down the torch and just said all right well we're just gonna like ruin things for you then we're gonna let you then then we're gonna like you know you ruin your own things for you <laughs> we're just gonna like you know pass this shit on now which, which is really weird because like it, in theory it's like in my head i, I wouldn't even know how to pull that off but like they you know that's that's just one of the things that you know it, it seems to have worked because it's still working yeah, I I definitely agree. I think we still hold a lot of the slave mentality. 
we another thing that was also brought up is like we care how white people see us Mm -hmm. and they talked about how one woman said i think a statement was she said that black people need to be more like jews they don't run from their past they Mm -hmm. own the fact that the holocaust happened and they had they you know celebrate their history they remember all this shit Mm -hmm. but they don't run from it and she says black people some black people act ashamed of slavery don't want something to be too black yeah. but then they're afraid oh white people are gonna think this and this like there was something like recently with black panther everyone went to like wearing the dashikis or traditional african things and then someone a black person put a comment like this is why white people think we're acting crazy and all this stuff mm-hmm. and my thing is we shouldn't even care we should not care how other races see us yeah, but we, we do. But we, 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 we do. Shit, we, we got shit to be proud of. I mean, that's just my opinion. But like, you know, I I, I do see what she can say in here. Like, we should not care how racist other races see us, or you know, other countries or anything like that. We should be proud of that. I mean, a lot of the things that America have that other countries have is because of us. Like, the refrigerator, the traffic light, those are black people, and I, what we helped the NASA too as well. So we did a lot of good things and we should, you know, that's the whole point of Black History Month. But it's like sometimes we do it for a month and then after that it's like... We forget uh, till the following year. <laughs> yeah, we like wait a whole year and then we're like... Nah, Alright, see y'all back in 2019 when we're, when we're proud of ourselves again for like one month. We shouldn't like, care, but because of the society then I hate to say it, sometimes it does matter how they see us. Because it... It can, you know, influence racist ideas and... I mean, here's my thing. We gotta see ourselves before we worry about how other people see us first. That's true, too. So, I don't know. Because the, the moment we start making competition with ourselves, we, we just start look, looking like, you know... They're, they're just playing audience to watching us do some crazy shit. Like, um, I live in Baltimore. And I'm like, the entire time, like, you know, all the riots were going on recently with, um, with the Freddie Gray trials and all that. It was like, don't get me wrong. There were like there's definitely peaceful protests going on, but one thing you see on TV was the the shitty shit going on, you know, yeah, getting flipped, yeah. fires and all that. And I'm like, okay, great. Now, oh, now because that's on TV, not only white, not only white people, but like you know, just people in general, Americans, people all over the world. All they're gonna see now is a bunch of niggas flipping shit upside down. And <laughs> shit. So now, so, so 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 then it's like we kind of have other people choosing how we're represented, you know, like, you know, me- media represents us in the way media wants to represent us. Cause like, like I said, two blocks over peaceful ass protests. And I promise you maybe three or 4% of media might've covered it. So it's like, I don't know. My, 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 my thing is it's coming from a place of like, you know, let us worry about us first. Or at least like get everybody on the same page. Cause like I don't know, that's what's one thing you're weird for short damn feeling on the same page. Cause I don't want to jump around here. But it's like the whole thing with the Jews, there's a part of the um the documentary that spoke spoke about um Asians. Yeah. And how they hold their shit down. Like it, like it's 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 more hey. of like a, a, a um, you know, uh what, what, what would that call that? They like like they just worry about themselves pretty yeah, much. Like, they're they, 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 unapologetic. They, they, right. They're untidy. unapologetically Asian. Like they speak yeah. Asian all day. They don't hide nothing. And like they, they stay close knit. Like they're in your neighborhood, but you don't even see them. Like That's but, but, true. but there's they're functional as fuck. And I'm like, yo, we, we we are the opposite of that, and we're very not functional. And I'm like, well, not we as in everyone, but like you know, what we see anyway is very not functional. You know? So yeah. I don't know. I, I like how the documentary handled that part because I'm like, you're damn right. Yeah, that's true. Like, <laughs> you see all these Chinese stores, you never see them in the neighborhood, but you know they're there. Yeah. And then when you go when they're speaking their culture, that's another thing that I agree that other like cultures do. They keep their culture alive more. Mm-hmm. And I, we definitely need to start doing it. Whether you're like, if you're Haitian, keep passing that now. But like, I'm talking about like Black Americans. We don't keep our culture alive sometimes. We you see, we, we don't. You see, it's weird because it's like I feel like um, African Americans are like the only like you know African descendants pretty much who have their culture very loosely tied to them. I yeah. feel like you know other Black countries like outside of even, outside of even Africa, let's just say like you know Caribbean countries, mm-hmm. or you know where, wherever else you can find majority Black um people um living there, majority Black population, they hold on to culture tight. Yeah, and only in America do you see like the black people. This only population of black people that like you know have like a loose um, hold hold onto their culture. 
outside of like you know like i said what we're on um, what media chooses to represent for us like you know the shitty parts of our music or like the violence or like it's, it's, it's weird when you when you um you know put that as a parallel with someone's culture like actual violence and you know shitty shit going on and i'm like no violence and be you know the, the ghetto shit and all the like you know the shitty things in movies like you know in, in movies you know a lot of the famous actors they get nominated for roles when they play like you know either a gangster or a slave or a crackhead or they're the comic relief and i'm like everyone else is getting all these noble ass positions like you know they're in politicians and shit and i'm like yeah that's kind of the culture y'all gave us to hold on to because that's all we're getting awards for you know yeah that's, that's just the way i see it though i think it also has to do with there's a speaking about like what black people are cast for there's a thing of like diversity casting Mm -hmm. So, like, when you cast a black person for something, for certain movies, it's like, oh, you're you're doing that to be diverse. Instead of saying, hey, you know what? This guy was good enough for this part. They should get the role. Some people, a lot of people view it as being diverse, even though I'm not that person. But that's what I see online. Like, oh, this is such a diverse cast. Instead of saying, you know yeah. what? This cast everyone you know earn their part they just happen to be diverse it, it also goes to something you told me like a while back too about um how mo um, black movies get called black movies they shouldn't That's it's, 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 instead of just being called movies and it's like yeah er everything we kind of do has to have a label on it as, as being a black version of just a regular thing the whiz yeah like you know it's it's it's, it's the black wizard of art right like yeah, yeah i'm like that's, no, that's maybe it's the wiz <laughs> right exactly but like you know like we, we we'll see that that but on the outside looking in, it's like oh, it's the black version of that white thing. And I'm like oh no 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 no, it's just the way. It's. Yeah. You got to spell it out for some people sometimes. It's like you know, keep your friends in check. That's all I gotta say. I mean make, yeah, make sure they're sometimes the in, like think about it like a good example is Friends. Everyone knows that Friends is the white version of Living Single, but no <laughs> one remembers Living Single, and Living Single did it first. But Friends gets all the credit as being new. And it wasn't new. They just took an idea that was already on TV and put a bunch of white people in it. And it's just like, you know, it's kind of crazy. And then, like, some people's like, oh, this is the black version of Friends. And that's, like, that's like the worst for me. Because I'm like, yo, that's right. not true at right. all. First of all, it's not a black version of anything. It's just living single. Exactly. Like, we friends. It's not, even, living... it's not even black friends. It's just living single. <laughs> I know. Mainly all female cast, by the way, on top of that, and it still held it down. So, you know. It, yeah, well, and they all had jobs. Leads anyway, right. Yeah. yeah, there was no one, like, I mean, there were times that over 10 and, like, Sinclair were a little dumb. Yeah. But, you know, that's on every comedic show. You always have one friend who always says something stupid. Yeah. But that's what happened, like, and that's also something I miss on television. But we're getting it back, you know. We, we're getting it back with uh, black TV shows on television. Getting a little, lot more tasteful, right. Yeah, like, you know, we have The Shy, we have Masters of None, um, we have Blackish, we have Grownish, we have, um, there's another one that everyone seems to love, Power, we have Empire, and a lot of these are major networks or major cable networks. Mm -hmm. So we come back, you and, know? And, and thanks to, you know, Black Panther right now, also on the big screen, not just like, you know, little screen on your TV homes. Like, now there's a new, I'm not going to make this a Black Panther podcast, but God, please. <laughs> Please go listen to that podcast. Yes. Anyways. Yeah, anyways, you're right. Like, it, it sets a new standard for, like, you know, black people in movies. Because it's like, I'm, I know I'm, like, reversing here, but it's like, wow. Uh, 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 a black lead who isn't, like, you know, a, a gangster or, you know, just some negative connotation to, like, you know, the actual real world black people is, is holding down the movie. And that movie is going to do some damage at the box office. And I yeah, can't wait. I'm I think domestically it's gonna kill. I'm just curious of what it's gonna do like overseas. But either way, we're gonna kill it domestically and it's still gonna be a hit just mm -hmm. for that long. Yep. But like he's right. Like we have Get Out now. We have black directors, black writers getting nominated for awards. You know, um the director who did the thirteenth, she got nominated for award and she's one of the first female black directors to get a big time movie, which I think is Wrinkle of Time. Which you all should go see that. I don't know if we're going to do a podcast yeah. on that. There's, there's also Childish Gambino with his show in Atlanta. Also, I'm nominated for a couple of awards itself. Yes. 
Yeah, exactly. So we're come, we getting there. We getting there. Mm-hmm. Girls Trip did better than anyone expected well, for a comedy. <laughs> and I, I guess it's fair to call the other one White Girls Trip. No, I'm saying it's not. <laughs> no, but, I'm, I'm pretty sure I got announced first. So I can't even say that. But either yeah. ways, it's the end result that counts. Yeah, like Girls Trip did way better than anyone expected. Like all races came to see it, and people enjoyed it. And now you see, and then because of that, Tiffany Harris, first black female comedian hosting SNL. Yep. The fact that we still have a first black anything in this day and age is a little right. weird. But <laughs> like baby steps, I, I, y'all were y'all were dead serious when y'all said baby steps. So I'm like we were really just catching up. And I don't know. I feel like we shouldn't the, we shouldn't like have the, any first anymore. I mean, but yeah, my, my thing. I feel like the turn of the century probably should have been the area where like you know we probably made the most progress. I'm like, damn, it's almost two decades in, <laughs> we're still having first. Yeah, I mean, we, they had black comedians on women and men, but they just never hosted. And I'm glad you know she started the trend. Mm-hmm. But, like, we're coming back. And getting back to the documentary, I also want to talk about the whole... They also focus on something called the crab analogy. Ah, yes. Where... And it's funny, because getting something back to what Michael said, all cultures have this same (laughs) analogy, like, all the time. And basically, it's like, oh, you don't... Two fishermen, and then I think someone says... Oh, what about the crabs or lobsters? Because I think the Asian woman used lobsters. Yeah, she's just sure you cut cover the pot when you you know put the, put the lobsters on. And they said, don't worry about it because when the crab or lobster try to reach to the top, someone's always gonna try to pull them down. Right. And they saying that in the black community we have this mentality, like you get rich and famous, but you're like, nah, bro, slow your roll, check yourself, always pulling you down, or like, oh, you wear your hair different, well. Mm. It looks okay, but, you know, maybe it should be straight. Uh-huh. Oh, you have this car, but, mm, you know, like, someone's always going to say something. And we do need to, that kind of brings in the topic of self-hate, because that's basically a lot of this documentary is about how we put ourselves down. And one thing they said, before we fix racism, we got to fix it within ourselves. Mm-hmm. In the community itself, we have to actually get rid of this whole, am I black enough, or embrace one our heritage and stop separating black different shades of black because let, let me tell you something if a racist white person see them they gonna consider you black and not yeah, care bro they're gonna be like yo your ancestors both count the same boat so it don't matter if that light one or that dark one is what i'm calling <laughs> a black person like yo your ancestors are on the literal same boat it does not matter i mean we are definitely like i think black people today are in a way better shape than they were even 40 years ago but it's also kind of crazy to me that you have people alive who remember segregation. Yeah. Remember Jim Crow. Like, that's probably another reason why we can't get past it. Because you have people alive who still remember. And you do need that. You do need that. But it's crazy. Like, it wasn't really a whole lifetime ago. Yeah. That's like we a just happened. Gra- a, couple, a couple grandmas, pr- pretty much. Yeah, that's someone's grandma yeah. or, like, great grandma who's like, I remember. I couldn't sit there. Yeah, remember the um the the Parkers in um the show the, the restaurant that the guy went to. Yeah, he was like, "Yo, like I just do out of habit now. Like even though like this was like a predominantly segregated um restaurant way back in the day, even though now like all these years later it's definitely not segregated. Like we still kind of keep that way only because like it's that ingrained. It's like it's a little crazy. Yeah, and like speaking of what Michael was talking about, um, they interviewed the rapper Petey Pablo, and he was talking about this restaurant in South Carolina. And he said during segregation days, black people sat all the way in the back. Mm. And while white people sat in the front and ate. And black people went to the back. No, no, no. They said um, they went around to the back to pick their food up because they didn't even sit down. They just went around to yeah, the Yeah, I was about to cart. Yeah. yeah. They did go to the back of the restaurant, get their food, and leave. They never ate there mm. while the white people ate in the front and everything. And then he said, till today, people, black people still do that. Go to the back there, get their food, and leave. And he, he said he knew the owner and the kids play together and everything. And when he sat in the front, he felt uncomfortable. And I think it's just because of habit. Like, if my whole life, when I'm going to this restaurant, I sat in the back. I mean, not sat in the back. I went to the back, just got my food and leave. I'm going to feel more comfortable doing that and sitting in the front, which is mostly white. Mm, I'm sitting my black ass down. No, I mean, I'm saying if I did that my whole life. If I went yeah. today, I mean, I'm just going to sit in the front. My thing is, no, here's my thing. I'm not, I, Maybe I'd be, I'd be wired differently if I was in that world, but it's like, if I learned that things have finally changed, 
the way I am now, I'm, I've, I'd have been already waiting for the day it happened. I'd be like, I'm going to sit. I'm going to sit right where everybody can see me. <laughs> I'm going to act a fucking fool. <laughs> That's true. I'm going to ruin that privilege of finally getting to sit down. Because I'm be like, oh, get me 12 of everything on the fucking menu. And then run. We can't pay that bill. <laughs> First, I don't, I'll be out of there. I'm like, this is why y'all weren't allowed to sit down. <laughs> I don't care. I got to put my ass in the seat. That's all that matters. I get to win. Here's another thing, though. I admit, sometimes if I go into a restaurant and I'm the only black person there, it's a little awkward, but I'll still be able to eat my you, food. You know what's crazy? Nine times out of ten when we go somewhere, we are the only black people in there. I stopped noticing. Ever exactly. since, like, the, the diner we went to, where we literally were the only like, yeah. black people in the diner, I was like, nah, I just gotta not notice it anymore, because... Even though sometimes you feel people watching you, but nah, see, we, I go, I be going in there with an appetite, so I don't give a fuck. I be like, Yo, <laughs> I'm hungry, I'm hungry. Please get the mozzarella sticks out pronto. But that's also part of the reason why when black men and women go to movie theaters or watch TV, they want to see people that look like them. You know, that's that's part of the reason why we want to see people that just like in restaurants. Low key, you still look, but you still gonna eat. At the mm-hmm. same time. But you're going to notice, like, yo, I'm the only black person in here. You're going to notice it. But as long as no one treats you differently, right. you should be fine. That's, that's, yeah, that's, that's really where I come from with it. Like, yo, my actions right now are a lot bigger than the glares. Like, you know, so long as you give me my good food, charge me fairly, you know, I'm going to give you a tip. And I, I'm just I, I'm just leaving the restaurant thinking, damn, I'm full. I would never once bat an eye thinking, like. Um, you know, I was getting like a funny look or a funny vibe from somebody in there. Unless like I was really getting something direct. Yeah. That's the only way I'd even give a damn. Yeah. I mean, there's times I've been in stores and yeah, especially uh, Asian women, they follow you in the store. <laughs> I, don't, I, don't, I don't know about all that, but here's my thing. Though. With the eyes, not the, like, oh, she not would know better me. not to like actually walk behind me because I'm going to look. Here's, here's my thing. I'm, I'm like a... See, this documentary doesn't really relate to me because I'm black as fuck. I know I'm black enough. <laughs> so, that being said, like, for real, whenever I go somewhere, yo, um, and it's not even like my parents taught me this or like I saw it happen, but it's sort of like a thing like I just realized like, by behavior alone on myself that kind of like transformed throughout the years. When I go anywhere indoors, unless I'm with Shanique, probably, mm-hmm. but if I'm not by myself, I'm like, I'll always take my hood off. Because the moment a dark-skinned person got their hood on in anywhere, no matter how innocent you look, you're going to be like, hmm, probably got to start turning them cameras and focusing on this one right there. <laughs> and I'm like, I'm harmless as shit. I haven't stolen anything in years. I think my, listen, the only thing I probably stolen way back was probably like, like a Jamaica Terminal, a couple of Snickers bars one day. And I was only, Wait, didn't I, we dare you to do that? And I, and I, I probably, probably did. I forgot what the context was about, about that. And I'm like, I probably just did it. For the sake of doing that, that's like the old first and last time I ever did it. Just to say that I have them. I just want to put it on my resume. Yes, I stole a Snickers bar. Fucking sue me. And Jamaica Terminal, if you are hearing this, um, I'm lying. But I'm <laughs> <laughs> Shoot, um, they kept yeah. getting still from they got cameras but yeah, and shit over there. But yeah, like, you know, I, I, I'm, I'm harmless. That's my thing. And another thing is, um, I heard from one of my friends. And this is, I, I kind of wish um, something in this documentary would have pointed out, put in something like this, yo. But then again, it's about, um, I, I ain't trying to, like, you know, uh, characterize to, like, one, one kind of one person here. But this documentary pretty much is about, like, you know, the, the light skin brown perspective. Yeah. But, like, for me, one, I take my hood off, and two, if, I wear, if I'm wearing my glasses, for some reason, I'm, like, 40% less, like, threatening. Because I've realized this. If I go somewhere yeah. without my glasses, yo, for some reason, I'm darker. And I'm like, <laughs> what the fuck? They, I, I guess they just think, oh, he has glasses on. He's an intellectual. Little did they know I'm a dumbass. <laughs> so, it's like, I'm, st- I'm, I'm still probably just as, um, you know... Greedy on the inside is stop somebody else. I just have self-control and I won't do it. Like, you know, I won't, like, take up some, you know, shit and run out the store with it. <laughs> but, yeah, I don't know. That's, that was a little tangent. Let's go back to the bomb documentary here. Yo, you like, yo, I'm black enough, all right? Yeah, listen, I'm, I'm plenty. Yo. You can't miss me. <laughs> unless, unless you're in the dark. <laughs> all right, I'm shading myself here. Let me stop. Yeah, yeah. He, he just shading himself, yo. All right. Let's get into the part of the documentary we were talking about good hair. Oh, yeah. Chris Rock hit on that before, but let's get into this one. Yeah. So, basically, they were talking about, oh, you know, straighter's better. Some of the women talked about when they first wore a fro. And the black woman did the slow turn, like, mm-hmm. bitch, what? Right. What do you think you're doing? Exactly. You don't go perm your hair? Yeah, yeah. I think the first time I wore a natural, you know, people in my life were shocked. 
don't want to put them on blast. Shit, I was shocked. You can say my name all you want. I was shocked. I've never seen you all natural until like maybe last year. <laughs> so I, I'm, I'll gladly put myself out there. Yeah, but you know, some people are shocked in a good way. Some people are shocked in a bad way. Like, mm-hmm. why did you do that to your hair? Blah, blah, blah. And I'm like, it's what I was born with. You know, I don't mind wearing my hair straight. It's just like, I was just tired. It's so It costs so much money. Like, it costs, like, $50 to do your hair, right? Or more. The longer your hair is, more money. So, let's do, like, an average of, like, $60, $70, right? And if you get weaves, like, you're ridiculous. But <laughs> bring your own weave. Right, yeah, yeah, And even then, yeah. that's still going to cost you money. But let's say without weave, about 70 bucks. Try doing that On a regular. Four, four times right. a month. Mm-hmm. That's a whole nother bill. Like, that's a lot of work. Just one of those is a phone bill for real. On a high end, a high end phone bill for real. I know. So it's like that's a lot of work. That could be like lunch if you time it right. Lunch for like a week at work. Or seventy something. bucks. If you time it right. What kind of lunch for seventy bucks? I'm talking like ten dollars a day. What? Yeah. yeah. All right, listen. That's about turning a whole different <laughs> podcast. Hold up. No, no, I'm like, like if Y'all you work seven the... days a week, ten dollars a day. Oh well. Oh, hmm. That's what I meant. I, I mean, my, 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 lunch, my lunch is cheap. My lunch is cheap, so I don't know. If, for, for like four or five years. That's what I'm talking about. No, no, no. That's, that's what, what I thought you were talking about. I'm thinking like, like if you oh. work, you know, every day of the week. Because mm, okay. some people do. Yeah, you're That'd right. be like $10 a day. Depending on where you work. If you work like like not in a city area and you can get cheaper food, then it'd be less. But either way, you're at least going to spend close to half of that. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And that's ridiculous. One visit is like, that could be lunch for two weeks if you time that right. And that's for five days. And that's kind of crazy to me. But we spend so much money to have our hair not be our hair. But I don't think we should be... Sh- One thing a professor brought up, he has a PhD. I think his name was Lester something. And he brought up that technically this term of good hair shouldn't exist. Mm-hmm. And he said it's, it's about how it's basically how you do your hair. Mm-hmm. So technically, you're not disrespecting your culture by like straightening or anything. Right, just but it. it's why you're doing it. That's important. I, I can see both sides of that spectrum though, because like now it's like that's kind of some people's identity. It's not even so much like a um like a expression kind of thing. It's like what well, you said before. People see straight hair as a good hair. Yeah. So now they're identifying with that. And now when you go natural, like you said, people got shocked when you went natural. Yeah. And you know a lot of people end up. Um, in the documentary, they were like, yo, when I went natural, people were like urging me to get my hair straightened back out. So it's like, I kind of see where they're coming from. Yeah, and also, one thing I do agree, if your hair is a certain way, jobs are a little bit harder. Like if you got dreads, um, no afro puffs. If Yeah, if you have dreads, you have to have neat dreads. Yeah. And then everything else in your resume has to be Flawless. on point. Flawless. Your hair does can, like, can keep you from a job. It shouldn't. If you're like dressed appropriately and you have and you're qualified, mm-hmm. it shouldn't, but it can't, you know, for appearance reason. Oh yeah, because you know, for me, I got like, you know, I'm listen, I'm, I'm organic black. My hair is nappy, so I got I got to like take good what care is of with it. This organic black. <laughs> How can you not be? I, I, I don't know. 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 It, it was a joke I heard recently, and it was like always funny to me. I don't know, but yeah. Um, He's not mixed, ladies and gentlemen. Oh, I'm not mixed at all. That's what the organic part is. When someone says they're organic black, usually that means that they're not mixed. You oh know? no 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 I, I no I was I was saying from I meant something else by it, but it's okay. Okay, that's fine. It's all right. He's but, organic um, black. Let's go back to it. No, okay. forget, forget about the organic part. Jesus, <laughs> I was already past that. I was a joke. I was, okay, there's a badly delivered joke, but now Shadik is forcing me to explain. I'm not even gonna bother with it. <laughs> Anyways, like, like Shadik was saying before, I I have like you know like you got to take care of your hair before interview. Because me, I realized that I'm. Every interview I've ever went to, like I think last year, due to someone's suggestion, I'm not gonna say no names, but I grew my hair out, and I had to maintain that shit for every interview I had. Yeah. Best believe, every interview I had, I think the day before I went to the barber, no excuses. Yeah, I paid probably thirty dollars for um, three days straight to get my my hair shaped up. Listen, that's one of the things I know people end up looking at a lot, especially when I grow it out. Mine mine grow out weird, so it's like <laughs> yeah. So it's like you know you gotta pay attention to that kind of thing. And I feel like the documentary definitely kind of hit on that too. It's like you know, don't get me wrong. I'm I'm all for pro natural. I'm all for um you know, the curls getting shown off. You know, get everything getting blown out. 
you know, the Afro puffs, the braids, the the dreads. I'm I'm for everything for real. So I'm just glad that the documentary hit on it in the way it did, and I, I, I am glad also that um the opposite side of the spectrum got explained by the um by the um the PhD you were talking about earlier. Yeah. Because it's like you're right, it it is just like an expression, but it doesn't at least to me it doesn't become an expression anymore once you start going into that area where it's like this is the only thing that I have. I can never let someone see my natural hair. Like you almost get ashamed of what you were born with, you know? Because that's that's kind of what happened now. Like a lot of the most famous like beautiful black people we can think of probably got straight hair right now probably not even them their own color probably blonde you know that uh beyonce shout out no i'm playing beehive wow, i wasn't beehive. Saying, don't no, come but, for him don't, don't, come. Don't, don't, don't come for her i didn't say any, i didn't say beyonce's name at all she brought that <laughs> Yo, up i could be talking about i could have been, been talking Brandon about mary j Blige. Uh, you don't know who i was talking about she's a much i said i could have Yo, she's, she's trying to get me in so much trouble. <laughs> Samantha, come get your sister, please. <laughs> Yo, put her name on black. Yo, you're supposed to take my side. Anyway, <laughs> anyway, no, I'm playing. It, if you want to dye your hair, I don't even care if you dye your hair. That's, that's, that's my thing. Uh, I, you, guess. Well, cause I think, honestly, like, I only think, like, blonde is like, I would kind of be okay with rocking blonde. You? Yeah, but I don't think it would fit me. Like, <laughs> you like, nah, Let's not do that. Let's not do that. You have to see it, I guess. It has to be the right shade of blonde. Or like a light brown. You see, it's because you're already light skinned as well. Like, why would you want blonde hair when you're already light, light? Yo? Hey, Beyonce. This is going to blend it. right. Beyonce does it. Stop bringing up Beyonce. This is between me and you, right? <laughs> <laughs> Mary J. Blige does it. Oh, here we go. All the people. He- no, she I'm playing. She's trying, play. she trying to get recalled uh, right now. No, I'm playing. He- there's, there's no. Queen B all day. Beyonce, very please. I love y'all. Do not take Shanique's word at face value. I said Queen B all day and Mary. Yeah, Yvonne. but then you, were, then you were then you were like trying to sit the beehive on me. I was like, no. <laughs> I, I see what kind of damage that can do. I don't want. <laughs> <laughs> no beehive. No beehive. That's okay. gonna be the end of this podcast. That <laughs> <laughs> the beehive don't care about a broadcast, but um, no. But seriously, knock on it, wood. Knock on wood, right? If you want to rock blonde, um, rock blonde. I, if you want to do this with your hair, cut it short, do that. If you want to wear a mohawk, do that. It's your hair. I'm, I'm all for people wearing their hair the way they want to. As long as you keep it clean. There is no excuse for dirty hair. That goes for every race out there. Wash your hair. Okay? Just wash it. It's not, it's not a problem. I can't, I can't give you a pass for dirty hair. Can't do that. Because then that's just not healthy. I'm all about healthy, clean hair. No matter how you wear it. Pink, blue, orange, green, blonde. Yep. Braids, dreads. All the above. Yeah. But also, moving on from that, um, they did talk about black music, which I think Michael talked about earlier. But they had a whole segment about how if you don't listen to certain genres of mm. music, you're not considered black enough. Yeah. If you don't know certain artists, you're not considered black. No. If you're black and you don't know who Marvin Gaye is, you get a side eye. You know, from some people, not me. I, I mean, I like, love what you love for real. For me, like, I don't give a fuck. I don't care if you listen to class, classical music. Do I know a lot of black people who do? No, I don't actually know a lot of people who do. But <laughs> <They're not laughs> like, right. I don't know a lot of people who listen to that. But if you knew that, fine. I don't think the type of music you listen to defines blackness. But I know a lot of people do believe that. Like, you know, you also looked up down on sometimes if you don't know certain black celebrities or certain parts. Like, if you're black and you don't know who Martin Luther King is. Hey, hold up. Hold up. So I'm going I'm to I'm have to change Shanique real quick. But earlier I said, yeah, I was watching a video on YouTube and I was like, yeah, that's Usain Bolt talking to Kevin Hart. And Shanique was like, who is Usain Bolt? That's some Jamaican nigga, is it not? Is yeah, because I told you that. <laughs> you ain't know that before. But, okay, like, like but I'm, it's fine. I'm using I'm using that as an example only because like Shanique is no less black for not knowing who he is, though. Don't get me wrong. I was, I was a little taken aback. However, but you would know more than me because he's Jamaican. Well, he's also world famous though. Like he's the fastest man on the planet. So, but don't is worry. Is he world famous? You, you're, you're missing the reason why I'm saying. I'm trying to say something good about you here. Jesus, I'm saying you're not any less black. Is what I'm trying to say. And he don't count. But no, I'm playing. I'm playing. He, Yo, she is. <laughs> I'm shady today. <laughs> God, there's no stopping her. No, but I'm saying, like, some people's like, but Martin Luther King, 
you know, who even every white person knows Martin Martinez, you know, but some people might look at you weird, be like, oh, you don't know who our first black president is, or our only black president as of right now, mm-hmm. or you don't know who Martin Luther King is, you don't know who Malcolm X is, and they actually teach that in school. Then you might get a little bit side eye. I'm not gonna say you're not black enough because you don't know that, but people will look at you differently, yeah. you know. Just like um, if we want to go back to music, you know, if you don't listen to rap, some people are like or R and B or jazz like, or like the black gospel, pretty much. Yeah, gospel, um, blues, you know, those type of genres. They like oh white, and like I, I was do the thing with the little kids where mm. the girl was saying there shouldn't be a a color associated to music. Mm-hmm. I know, and you know. In a world where no racism exists, now we could say that, but there is. It's like when you listen to pop. What do people say? White girl music. I love my white girl music bumping in the car, man. <laughs> but I think the point of the documentary is like, oh, every time we it. touch, I get this feeling. That's my shit. I'm still black. I don't care. Listen, I'm black enough. <laughs> I'm still black enough. I don't give a fuck. I'll bump that shit in my car with no hesitation. Yes. He'll bump that, and then he'll bump, you know, Plain Jane, you know. Right, exactly. Panda. Oh, I, I got that song, too. Yep. You know, I got bras in Atlanta. Yeah. Listen, put my, put my music on shuffle. It's going gonna, it's gonna to fuck with your head. Like, you'll go all the way from, like, Adele to, like, you know, Flatbush Zombies or some shit. Like, it's Bob on my knob. Like, no, I'm playing. <laughs> I ain't say all that. <laughs> I'm just saying, you know that song, though, right? Exactly. I don't have it. <laughs> I don't have it either. But everyone knows that that line at least, you know. I think we know it reluctantly, to be honest. Like, it's like, yeah, it happened. Let's but going on, you know. <laughs> we, we gotta claim it. It's ours. <laughs> yeah, it is. You know, we gotta claim them all. Unfortunately, right. we gotta claim the young thugs. We gotta claim the mumble rappers. The futures. Mm. The kings of mumble, as of right now, Migos. Oh yeah. Gotta claim them. Mm. Motorsport, something, something, sport. Like, I don't really know the lyrics to that song. And, like, right. That's literally what I heard the first time I heard that song. <laughs> that's probably, that's, that's, that's probably <laughs> the top like, example for mumble rap, in my opinion, right now. But, you know, it's, it's still an old song now. It's like about, what, what, three years old almost? Yeah. That yeah. is a top. That's a really that's good That's like. Anything uh, from Young Doug is basically an example of yeah. mumble rap. Yeah. And Rich, oh, you can understand Rich Homie Corn sometimes. Sometimes. Half the time. Yeah. <laughs> once in a while. <laughs> yeah, once in a while. You know. Then you got little, little Uzi Vert. Philly dude. Oh, you know. excuse me. Yeah, excuse you. But. I know, I keep shaving. Yo, oh, she's the worst kind of person. <laughs> I'm sorry. I keep shaving the shit out of him. But, like, you know, you know all these rappers and if you're talking about r&b you know a lot of people know monica and brandy and jasmine sullivan and all these type of singers Mm -hmm. keisha cole obviously we still claim beyonce even though she does her own genre at this point but we still claim her because she started r&b and destiny style so she we claim her but you still know all these things and it's part of our culture and i think that's something we have to accept now, I'm not saying you, you should like other genres. Like, I love indie rock. That's like, I love a lot of it, even though a lot of it's emo. Punk, I've listened to punk rock too. Not a fan of metal. And I could like some country, but it doesn't change your black status. You don't lose your black card. I don't think there's a such thing as losing your black card. If you black, you black. You can't lose it. Yeah, you're kind of born with that. Like, I think there was a point where, like, one, one of the questions I thought was um, really interesting that they asked in the documentary was, how do you know if you're black enough? I said, I looked in the, like, oh, the little boy pointed to his skin. I was like, doesn't this make me black? My skin yeah, color. Right, like, right, yeah. I, I'm, I'm not that, I'm not, you know, I'm not, I, I put down black or African American on my, um, all the sheets. That's what I am. I look at my skin, realize it ain't white. Um, Let me see. You know, um, you, um, you're you're in the culture probably, depending yeah. on who you are. Like yeah. for real, I don't know. If it boils down to me, yo, yo, it's on your skin. 
if <laughs> pretty much if the white people say you black, you're probably black. <laughs> they, yeah. they, 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 they ain't gonna call another white person white. Like, yo, if you're if you're black, they don't know. Yeah, they're like, <laughs> they like, oh, you know, you black. I probably, like, I probably can't say this word around you. You know, like. <laughs> can you imagine? Lord. Uh, then, the, then the let me watch something. Was like the guy was like, "What's up, my N word?" Yeah, I forgot. GTA. Yeah, yeah, GTA. yeah, yeah, yeah. What's and up, I was my like, N-word? That was so weird. I don't even walk up to random black people I know and be like, "What's up?" <laughs> like I don't do that. But yeah, that ain't for me. I, I probably just walk past you because I don't know you. But some people do that. I do do the nod sometimes. Oh, I, I do the nod. Oh, that's what? That's universal. That's listen, universal. Man. You just gotta be like, listen, hey. man, that's an unspoken bond when you give them the nod. They just know what's up. Like, yo, yo, baby's nod. That's how you know. <laughs> yeah, just yes, man, you get the nod, yo. Yeah. That's like a black. That's like an invisible black dad. Like that's literally how it works. <laughs> like we ain't doing it because you know it's flu season, but we get it. You know. <laughs> 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 keep your hands yeah. clean. You never know. Yeah. Okay. But, I'm making a fool. Let me stop. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, I don't think there's a such thing as taking away your black card. You know, some people try to take away from celebrities. You know, Stacey Dash. They try to revoke her black card, but fortunately, Stacey Dash revoked her black card. <laughs> no, like I said, like I don't think you can re- like lose your black card. But she cooning. She she was cooning. She she. I don't know. Listen, man, that's a whole different podcast for real. But yeah, what, what you know, or say? sometimes Don Lemon. Sometimes they be like, ooh, bro. Or basically every black person in Trump's cabinet cabinet <laughs> be yeah. like, no. But hey, I'm sorry, guys. They one of ours too. Unfortunately, mm. it sucks, but it's true. We ain't gonna make this a, like a political podcast or nothing, but yeah. Yeah, <laughs> like if you black, black. That's what. That's how I see. It. Right, you still black. Even though I might side eye you, like, what are you talking about? I'm still gonna be like, you know. Mm. But overall, given my, I think we basically hit all the stuff. Um, there's also one thing. Um, they talked about other black people using the whole. Oh, you're not black enough as an insult to light skinned people. Mm-hmm. Like the little boy, one of the interviews gave an example where there was a puzzle. He's walking. He walks around his puzzle, and then his fr- the puddle, and his friends like, "What? You're not black enough? Walk through the puddle like a black man." And I'm like, "What does that have to do with black enough? Yeah. And where did he learn that? Like, that's the type of stuff we should not tell our children." Yeah. Like, man, don't go. What, what about your shoes? Like, no, these days, black people in their shoes, they like, you know, at the hip. So I know, and the little boy was like, yeah. I'm not trying to not be black. I just don't want to get my uh, shoes dirty. I'm just trying to keep my shoes dry. <laughs> Listen, I could be wearing the sh- I could be wearing the shittiest running shoes in the world. I don't give a fuck. I'm not jumping in no goddamn puddle. Then hey, if you feel I'm, that I'm not black enough because I stepped I stepped around the puddle, then I'm just not. Like, that's how I feel about it. Mm-hmm. At least I won't have water in my shoes or right. anything like that. Like, I'm trying to not have wet socks. The fuck? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> you, know, you know, and then there's also uh, other examples where they're like, oh, if you have, you know, not typical views of the black community, they're like, oh, you're, you're thinking white or, you know, you're talking white and stuff like that. That's another form of trying to basically say, oh, you're not black enough. Yeah, I mean, I mean, it's it's kind of weird too, cause like back on the whole music thing, it's like I remember someone saying, um, like they had like a very critical statement about um hip hop. It's not like you know they're saying hip hop is shitty. They're just saying it's really bad for representation. But um, but when we had like the shittiest rappers, um, in certain people's opinions, um, you know, be on like the biggest um platforms on TV, like at the award shows, you know, late night talk shows and early morning news, and I'm like. Yeah, I get that, but the other person on the other side was like, yo, but at least, at least they're black. I'm like, no, we need, like, good representation. I don't care if they're black. I need them to act right on See, TV. See, I think we need a good balance. Like, yeah, I mean, I mean, a good balance, yeah. I'm not, I'm not saying, like, like, it's all black. I know some of them, like, they're just that way. But it's like, you know, things get controlled. Yeah. And, 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 like, there's going to be a point where it's like, that's just a pattern that they have. Like, they have, like, less of the intelligent black folks on the TV than they do for, you know, the, I- the rappers and the entertainers who, like, got where they are. Because of like you know, one 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 shot things that like you know, kind of perpetuate a lot of stereotypes. Pretty much. Yeah. I'm not saying necessarily like a rapper or an actor, but just someone who can like you know ho- hold a actual conversation about something serious and like you know be be taken seriously as well. 
if I'm pretty much trying to get at. I know she thinks I'm th- I'm thinking of serving someone in particular, but I'm really not. I'm I'm not. You changed yourself because I was. Oh, alright. That's that. fine. We had the conversation before, so I just figured. But alright, that's fine. No, no. Um, I'm talking. One thing that was also mentioned in that same conversation is that I think it's also we're also part of the problem. Mm-hmm. We're buying the shitty rap. You know, at the end of the day, we're mm-hmm. buying that, so we're making them hits. We're not buying the commons anymore. Or, you know, we're still buying Kendrick. Um, you know, still buying J. Cole's. Yeah, we're still buying. Well, maybe not that last album. But we're still buying J. Cole as of now. You know. And, you know, we're also still buying, you know, the Logics and the other conscious rappers out there. Some of them, you know. But we as an audience and as a black community be like, you know, we don't want to hear this shit. Yeah. Then the music will change. Mm-hmm. Once, but once you start fucking with their money, they'll, they'll get it. Yeah, and that's when we're going to start getting, you know, better rap on radios and more... And here's my thing. Before before people get the wrong idea, I'm not saying conscious rap is like the only good rap out there, you know? Like, some of the shitty rap, some of the, the, the shittier content in rap can actually sound good. Because, like, you know, just today, um, I was listening to Plain Jane, and I was like, damn. I kind of want... Yeah, I was listening to A$AP Ferguson, I was like, damn, I kind of want to hit the song, but I'm fucking with it, you know? It's like, I get it, but it's like, you know, as long as it's not, like, in droves or, like, you know, one of the overly out there songs about like you know some kind of fuckery <laughs> then you know all right fair enough it's fair game but you know it's there, there, there's there's different lines of quality that's going to come down to the individual to figure out yeah. pretty much my thing is i just want more variety i think I th- I we as a consumer need to challenge the artists to actually sound different mm-hmm. but we don't so until that happens the game isn't going to change they're slowly phasing out of auto tune so they got that to be proud of Auto tune never really bothered me. Auto tune kind of did bother me. I, 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 I was always I, I, I about lyrics. I don't know how Future got as far as he did with um freaking auto tune being I didn't so damn listen heavy. to Future until probably like a couple songs, like maybe Mask Off. Um, that didn't help me at all. <laughs> no, but I'm saying it played everywhere, so that's the only time yeah, I listened yeah, yeah, to it. Yeah, it didn't yeah. make me like. I have no Future albums. I have like two or three songs from him, but I'm never been like Future. Never really did anything for me. I'm only using it as, as an example. I'm just making this like, like, like a future tangent. I'm just using him as an example here. Yeah, I mean, yeah. And uh, you can say that about Lil Wayne, too. You it's, say it's, that it's weird. Like, Lil Wayne does it, but, like, he he, he does it um, for, like, his commercial song, though. He doesn't really do it for, like, you know, his Lil Wayne song, pretty much. Like, anything that goes commercial, for some for some reason, he, he realizes auto two and makes the money on it. But the guy's got, like, way more mixtapes than he, than, like, you know, most other rappers out here. Yeah, so it's yeah, like, I mean. That, on, on almost none of his mixtapes, he's ever using, like, auto tune. Here's the thing. Small minority I'm, if it is. I'm, I'm gonna put a disclaimer out here. I don't like Lil Wayne as a rapper. <laughs> but I do agree that he sounds better on his mixtapes. Yeah. Except maybe the Carter three. Maybe the Carter. <laughs> and I'm not even the biggest fan of I love Carter Lil, Three. But I actually I can't hate on that album. Yeah. I don't think there's a person alive that loves rap that can hate on that album. Mm-hmm. They're probably like, man, some of those metaphors, a little questionable. But the way you sound was really good. But, you know, I definitely agree until we change how what type of music we want, I don't think the music's going to change. But there's no problem. Like, I don't mind the mama rappers. I just want to hear more of this other type no, of rap. I put it out. I'm putting I'm put it on a shirt. I mind the mama rappers. Like, no, I want to understand you and be able to explain to someone who does not thing. like rap what the fuck you're saying. We might not be able to understand, but if you go to their concerts, they're screaming the lyrics. Even though you probably Google that shit. But they're yeah. still screaming the lyrics, so someone's understand. I'm not worried about them. I'm worried about Michael. Michael <laughs> needs to struggle to to keep up with that shit. In the weird metaphors, but yeah, I don't think no one really knew the words to that. But all these years later, we still don't know. <laughs> I don't know that. least saying, but yeah, um, I guess I think we hit all the topics. For sure, we hit enough tangents too. <laughs> so yeah, we, we, right. we kind of went. We went left. Several lefts. And jumped on the cliff and was like, hell, fuck Fuck it. it. (laughs) (laughs) But overall, my final grade, I say watch this documentary. I think you're going to find some things that you never knew about. And they do interview people of different, you know, different backgrounds. Um, Yes, it's more of the light skin perspective, but you still get a lot of history in there as well. You get people who lived through the shit too. They enter like a lot of like older generation as well. Some like you know middle age, then younger and even children. So I think you get just 
perspective through all the ages, and that's part that's makes the documentary really good. Closing remarks. Um, people like to think that it's pretty much like you know black people versus the world, but like you know this gives a good idea of black people versus black people, which kind of is a real deal thing here. And you know, looking into it gives you a very good perspective on that, pretty much. And I definitely agree with you right there. It's like, you know, like I said, it's definitely not just black people versus the world. We've got a lot, of, a lot of building to do, like you know, as far as making ourselves good before we can start, you know, being seen the way we actually deserve to be seen or want to be seen or anything like that. You know, like it's it's it's, it's a process, and it comes down to individuals. And I'm um, like, you know, it can go down to, to an individual level. It's like you know, we sit up by ourselves. Like you look in the mirror every day, you're like, yo, how can I get myself better? You know, than I was the, yeah, the day before. It's kind of what, um, on, a, on a large scale of black people. Like yo, we just need to focus on us. Before we will focus on um, how people are going to see us, because I'm pretty sure after we fix ourselves, we kind of fix the other problem, you know. Yeah. Through the same process, so yeah, definitely check it out. It's, 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 it'll probably fly under your radar. I'm not sure if it's like on anything else other than Amazon Prime or something like that, but yeah, it's very you, recent if, too. It came if, out if, last year, right? So, so if, you, if you see it, definitely give it a peek. It's not you know crazy long. It's not like you know forceful of like any kind of information. It's just real people talking. It's not like you know we're getting like people who make it sound rehearsed like it's just real people talking like real just kids talking like letting them know how they see shit so yeah give it give it give it a check all right so guys um i'm gonna close out this podcast by saying hey let us know what you guys think of this documentary or any subjects that we talked about in the documentary and you could tweet us at echo you podcast and then you can also find us on any social media but echo underground podcast which includes facebook itunes soundcloud and, and let us know if you're black enough. Ignore that last <laughs> statement. <laughs> and you can find us on any app as well that hosts podcasts at Echo Underground Podcast. And we'll see you next time. Bye. Bye.